Welcome back to another video. This time I want to walk you through a little bit of game theory from Nash Equilibria to shelling points, which is something that is good to know even outside of the context of Bitcoin. Let's start right away with a few examples. These are from William Spaniel's Game Theory 101. You can find the link to his video in the video description. There is a game called Pure Coordination. Players get a point each if they select up left or down right at the same time. Anything in between or different choices from the players result in zero points. The correct options are called pure strategy Nash Equilibria. Now the question is, how do the players choose the same strategy? Because there are two different ones that both lead to the same correct results. A possible solution to the question are focal points, also known as shelling points, as formulated by Thomas Schelling in his book The Strategy of Conflict. The concept of shelling points is actually really easy to understand. A shelling point is a particular pure strategy Nash Equilibrium that players select due to the salience of that choice. That means players converge to the strategy that comes to their minds the easiest, the most obvious solution. First example, pick a square here. If we pick the same one, we win. The obvious and therefore winning choice is A6, due to the color it's the most salient one. Second example, pick a number greater than zero. If we both pick the same number, we win the amount of dollars of the number we picked. Most people intuitively pick one million. You don't just want to win 10 bucks, and a million is a status number. Becoming a millionaire is a salient choice. And the third, also most well-known example, has to do with meeting someone without being able to communicate when or where. Suppose that I want to meet with you, but I don't tell you where and I don't tell you when. We both want to meet, but we cannot communicate any more information to each other. That would sound like an impossible problem to solve. We're done. We can't do it. Not quite. Because I know that you're a rational person and smart and educated, and you know I'm a rational person who's smart, we're going to start thinking, well, if we have to pick an arbitrary date, we're probably going to pick New Year's. And what time? Midnight or 12.01 a.m. And where would we meet? What is a big meeting point? Well, if we're Americans, it's probably in New York City. It's the most important city. And where in New York City will we meet at midnight? Probably Grand Central Station under the clock. Maybe you end up at the Empire State Building, but not likely. So you can just use social norms to converge, in this case, onto a shelling point. And there are many times in many games where you can look at the game itself, whether it's business or art or politics, and you can find the convergent shelling point within the context of that game. And so you can cooperate with the other person. Here's a simple example. Let's suppose that you have two companies that are competing heavily with each other and they hold an oligopoly. And let's say that they're competing right now and the price fluctuates between eight bucks and 12 bucks for whatever the service is. Don't be surprised if they both converge on 10 bucks without ever talking to each other. But what does all of this have to do with Bitcoin? Bitcoin is one of these shelling points that we converge towards as the primary protocol for communicating value. The rest of the video is based on Willem Vandenberg's excellent article on shelling points, network effects and Lindy, inherent properties of communication. We go right in with a quote. Unlike all other products, protocols do not benefit from the perpetual struggle of competing markets as one would assume to be the case in a healthy capitalist environment. Rather, the opposite is true. Protocols tend to converge to one sole victor over time, who subsequently becomes the dominant monopoly player within its respective market. But what do we mean exactly by protocols? Is it constrained to computer protocols like HTML, HTTP and TCP IP, all proven to be monopoly king within their respective markets? No, not really. A single solution is better than multiple solutions for everything that's about communication. And that makes total sense, because if we each use a different form of communication, we are not able to communicate with each other, which is the whole point of communication in the first place. You have the strongest network effects in communication networks because they clearly become more useful the more people use them to communicate with each other. Other examples, all with equally fascinating origin stories that enjoy the network monopoly effect, include VHS, Facebook, Amazon, Postgres, the English language, the dollar, Google, and so on. There is one binding factor that this broad collection of networks all share in common. They all belong to the sphere of communication. Whether it's VHS recorders that provide an analog interface model to communicate movies from tape to screen, TCPIP that makes it possible for all email clients to send content to each other, or USB ports that allow multimedia devices to have a direct line of information exchange. Communication is their core function. In any other sphere you can name, whether it be entertainment, sports, consumable or durable good, services, arts, etc., there is no inherent tendency towards monoculture. 
Now let's think about Bitcoin for a second, because this video ultimately is supposed to be about Bitcoin. Bitcoin is often compared to a protocol or a language, which is clearly from the sphere of communication. Money is a language. It's our way to express value to each other. And yeah, sure, we have many different languages, but when a German talks to a Swede or a Peruvian talks to a Japanese, they will use the lingua franca, which is English. Bitcoin is the lingua franca to communicate value in the next global monetary system. Because money is a form of communication, we can therefore assume that it will act as any other communication protocol. It will converge to a single protocol. In Austrian economics, this market chosen protocol is called the most sellable commodity. Users and developers don't easily switch networks due to a sunken cost in the previous network. Minor improvement in other networks won't cut it. You would need a 10x improvement on not just one, but most axes. Which is something we just don't have in the thousands of alternative cryptocurrencies. It is very, very hard to create a protocol that is significantly better than Bitcoin on all axes. To be clear, in the early stages, fierce competition is more than welcome. It's the only way to arrive at a broad consensus among all market participants. But having several competing protocols in the long run leads to inefficiency in communication. Because if you use protocol A and I use protocol B, we cannot communicate with each other. This is what you might call protocol loyalty. It signifies the inefficiency of repeatedly switching between different communication networks. Division of labor cannot express itself to its fullest in a fragmented society. Now we have been talking about Bitcoin being the shelling point for money. However, it has always been gold. Throughout history, we always went back to gold. It's the time-proven solution. It takes a paradigm shift to go from a previous shelling point to a new one. Here is an example from the transition from VHS to DVD. DVD is the next generation technology in the video communication market. Where VHS was the undisputed king in the realm of analog video, the DVD represents an improvement of several orders of magnitude because of its digital nature. Vastly better video quality, longer playtimes, easy scene selection, no more rewinding, great interface possibilities, multiple audio tracks, deleted scenes and so on. It is this kind of innovation that breaks open the Lindy effect. Only a paradigm shift justifies the time and energy expenditure needed to make the long and burdensome transition from one protocol to another. Bitcoin is that kind of monopoly breaking paradigm shift for the technology we call money. It's at least 10 times better than gold in all the monetary properties as discussed in previous videos. And there is no competitor that comes close to Bitcoin. Fact is that by this time Bitcoin has been able to build up such a considerable lead in hash rate, developer community, decentralization, code quality, reputation of extreme security, liquidity, amount of users and nodes, and ossification of its core principles that it seems virtually impossible to break its Lindy effect. This rationale also completely demolishes the blockchain not Bitcoin mantra, as the shelling point is purely based on Bitcoin the money, not blockchain the technology. Blockchain is just a tool, a very sophisticated but narrow tool, specifically designed to allow Bitcoin to have monetary properties that were unthinkable before. A blockchain without similar monetary properties than Bitcoin is like a computer in the middle of the jungle, without any access to electricity, a useless piece of junk. And that is essentially why Bitcoin is winning, due to its open source and permissionless nature. A language is supposed to organically develop and spread without a central planner that decides how the language is supposed to work. The evolution of a communication protocol is an organic process that can only be improved on by trial and error of society as a whole. Assuming that a small group of people in a corporation can perfectly predict the needs of an entire market is naive. A communication protocol cannot function properly under central planning. A single company that controls a communication protocol is the exact antithesis of capitalism. It completely undermines the competition of ideas. Open source, on the other hand, thrives on the competition of ideas due to its uncompromising, meritocratic nature. I will conclude the video by pointing out again why Bitcoin will become the shelling point of money. If you did enjoy the video or at least learned something from it, I would appreciate it if you leave a like and subscribe to the channel for further content. With the emergence of Bitcoin, it is becoming increasingly clear that the Lindy cycle of the dollar is coming to an end. Bitcoin is the pinnacle of what human endeavor and technological progress is capable of, as it brings together a large variety of fields, including cryptography, politics, distributed systems, economics, game theory, etc. It took us thousands of years to come up with a worthy successor of gold as our money protocol, and therefore I think it is reasonable to assume that the Lindy cycle of Bitcoin will rule for at least hundreds of years to come. Thank you for watching.